Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Northampton's uh, Planning Board public hearing tonight at, uh, of October 13th, 2002, 2022. Wow. Yeah. Um, just to notice that, yes, we're uh, live here at City Council Chambers, and also there is a hybrid um, function going on with Zoom, so participants can watch the proceedings and listen but they're not able to participate or ask questions during the meeting. Um, they did have an opportunity prior to the meeting to communicate with the planning office through Carolyn Miss. Um, but that being said, we uh, usually open our meeting with a public comment period um, for anyone who'd like to make a comment that's regarding an item that's not on the agenda. The two items on our agenda has to do with a site plan review for a detached second unit up on Valley, Pine Valley Road. And the second item is about a second driveway opening on Morningside Drive. So is there anyone who would like to comment about anything else for the planning board? If so, come to the podium. All righty then. Uh, so we'll move into our first um, hearing that was Posted for 7 p.m. today, it's a site plan review to build a detached second unit by Angel Ortiz of four at four Pine Valley Road, Florence, map ID 35181. And usually we start with a presentation by the applicant. We might just want to note there's a turn the, or turn the button. Ah, okay. Press this button and I'll turn green. And then the folks, there we go. My name is Dave Reardon, a uh, builder. I'm Angel Ortiz. I'm the owner of the property. Uh, so yeah, for I did bring a copy of site plan. I don't know if you wanted to look at that or if you just wanted to kind of give you a quick synopsis. Yeah, usually we have something electronic that we look because we're so high tech here in the planning board up on our big. We have that too. We you... submitted the PDF. Okay. Well. Great. But just in case I brought this. Great. Would any of the planning board members want to look at those set of plans? Are you okay with the electronic? Back in the back in the day, we would all enroll these things and we, you know, there wouldn't be room for all of the plans, but things have slimmed down since then. But thank you for bringing those just in case. Yeah, no problem. Um, While well, that gets loaded up. So yeah, it's just a small 560 square foot uh detached dwelling it will be connected to the existing house for utilities uh for electric water sewer um there we go and we're pretty far from any uh setbacks that we need to be and they have a lot of parking there so we don't really need to worry about adding much there they have already a pretty big driveway for what they have but we'll make sure just to add like a little bit of a spot for this extra dwelling as well. Uh, primary use is just friends and family come and stay. That's really what it's for. Um, so it's not, I know on paper, it's like a second unit, but I think the intent here is more just to have some more friends and family to come stay. That's got at least some amenities, some, something basic, you know? So it's not like a full blown, like second unit that you might have on like a, you know, we have like normal two units. Um, let's see what else there's no like major, uh, vegetation that has to be clear or anything like that. There's just some over overgrowth grass weeds, stuff like that, where we just clear that where we're going to build, uh, we're not getting up into any trees where any trees have to be removed or anything. Um, if for some reason, something were to change on that front, he's got a lot of wooded area. We could easily add trees. If, if something came up during construction, we have to move a tree, you know, take one out. Um, but that's not in the plans. Looks like we're clear of anything like that. So it's just overgrowth that we're clear out and build on. Uh, it would be peered, helical piles go in the ground. Huh. Um, and let's see what else, any other major items I can think for you guys. Well, we've made sure to address all of the, um, sustainability and, uh, other items that were given to us by the um, planning board, or excuse me, the Department of Planning yep. um, as part of the application. Um, 
and I mean, I've been a pretty quiet tenant uh, <laughs> of Fort Pine Valley Road um, since I moved there uh, a little over three years ago, and uh, this won't change anything about that. So, Mr. Ortiz, did you have a chance to talk to your neighbors, the abutters? Uh, yes, I spoke with, uh, uh, I went out around the neighborhood and knocked on everybody's doors. There were a couple people who were not home. Um, I knocked on Marianne's door, uh, I think a couple days ago, two days ago, three days ago, just to let her know because I missed her the first time, but uh, neighbors on the other side um, are okay with it. And I have nothing but woods behind me for a very long while. So, right. right. Uh, yes. So I do have a question about, I, I couldn't quite tell the location of the new unit and uh, all the electric transmission lines that go through the neighborhood. And then there's another set that go to the current dwelling. Where does your building sit in relation to those? Uh, those are, well, we haven't called dig safe, obviously, to know if there's anything in the ground, but just from going on site and looking, it looks like those lines are overhead and coming from the pole over to the house overhead. And we would be set back away from those a bit. Further that makes sense. So they're not gonna- Right, so that we're trying to stay roots. away from those. Yeah, we don't wanna be under, under that. We're trying to move away from those. Yeah, I don't think you really could considering the height of those, which isn't very tall, so. Exactly. Yeah. On Pine Valley Road, they're not, uh, the electrical poles aren't abutting the road. They're, I, I think it's on my property, yeah. um, so. Yeah. And for those utilities, oh, okay. there you go. Yeah. Yep. And so past where the vehicles are is kind of where we're talking about. So you can see that like we're going to be set back a good amount from those wires. Uh -huh. Go. Other questions from board members where we open it up for public comment? All right, well, why don't we take a moment and see if there's anyone in the audience who would like to make a comment or about the, and yeah, you need to kind of come up to the podium for us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, and you, we may ask you to, a, a few more questions after, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Hi, my Hello. name is Stacy Carter. I represent my mother, Mary Ann Carter. Um, the few questions that we have this evening are in relation to where you're placing the, the dwelling, is it going to be between his house and my mother's house, forward, backwards, sideways? Where is it exactly going to be put? And when he's talking about the telephone lines, that pole shares property line. So would my mother then be looking at a house right outside of her living room window? Would there then be headlights and driveway coming up facing her window? She's lived there since 1963. She's well into her late seventies now. Um, and in relation to the parking, how would that exactly work? As far as, excuse me, next to my mother's house. Okay. And the septic tank, she's worried about the leach field for the septic tank. All right, thank you. So it's really three questions, uh, the septic tank, the, uh, the driveway, and then the impact of lights at night, and, and the then property line. property line. Right. All right. So what we'll do is we'll ask the applicant to address those Thank uh, you. concerns for us, okay? Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, can you pull up that plot map again or? Um, yeah, hold on. Uh, so we, we have to come up here because it's oh, sure. public hearing. We have to see it and uh, people on Zoom have to see it. It's kind of tricky. Can oh, we? Yeah, okay. uh, cameras over this way, please. Or just put it back on the screen. Yeah, okay. Um, but at least for maybe for yeah, her to see. Fine. Yeah. But then they can see that. And if you could speak okay. into the microphone, please, because it's. Uh, I got here for you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so, so sorry. mom's here. Yep, and, and so, so the telephone pole. Yeah, so that's property, that's and here's setback. Yep, 
and then here's his existing right and so we're talking about here so we're so come straight up the driveway and plunk it right here between these two houses yeah. yep so where all of all of this like uh trees and and overgrowth is this side. we'll be over here yep. you're not going to take any of these trees down here no no we're not removing anything there and then your parking would then be facing my mom's living room. This is your parking for here. Yeah, we could potentially so do that right in here. Or we could also if, drop a panel fence. If that's like a panels. huge issue, we could also see if we can orient that way. Okay. Or put a panel fence there. Yeah, I think those. Are, yeah, I think both of those are completely. Let's uh, let's in, to do. Yeah. Where would you let's start? interrupt for a minute, folks, because you can't have this little internal conversation. Oh no, we're not. not. <laughs> yeah, without us. No. So why don't you just show us what you said? By using the touchpad here, and that'll reflect oh, okay. up to the screen, okay? Yeah, I'll do my best to do that. Yeah. Let's see. So we're talking about um, this property here, and uh, the concern right now would be that no trees are coming down here between, just so that way we maintain that like privacy and, and view, and we're not touching any trees or, or brush or anything that's over there, or any of the bushes or anything. Um, so that will stay intact. The other thing we were discussing was this parking where we've kind of oriented this direction. So we're about headlights coming in this way. So we were saying we could certainly put a panel fence there if they wanted, that'd be fine. Could put a couple of sections there if that would help block any headlights that way. Or there's actually a good amount of room here. We could also potentially orient that spot the other way mm -hmm. so that it points that way. That was flexible. We had just Great. drew it in there as like, hey, we can make a spot here, but really it could probably move. Okay. So that's something that we'd be happy to just to uh, work with you on, That'd just to make sure that we're not going to cause an issue with that. That's very simple. Place the septic tank with the leach. Uh, where? Uh, Hold on one sec. Yep, go for it. What was that question? The leach field and the septic. Okay. So if I understand correctly, the leach field is current for the Mr. Ortiz's house, and it's all going to be connected. The sewer is going to run back to his house. So I contacted Public Works. He's on city water sewer. So there isn't septic in Leachfield. Oh, there isn't in that house. Okay. Right. The other two are. Oh, okay. Three when I, I called them today to can double check because on okay. paper it said city water sewer, but I had called Public Works today, say, can you please double check? And they did and they said that. So okay. we would just be tying into his existing water sewer. So there shouldn't be any septic leach field. Yeah. Um Okay. Pretty, okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And historically, uh, when I have had multiple cars in the driveway uh, to this point, uh, I do have quite a bit of room in the driveway and usually just drive it straight. So the driveway is comes up to halfway where my house is currently, but usually cars are parked like uh, a, a further back uh, past the back of the house. So there's, there's definitely uh, currently room for um, additional cars. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of, I didn't see any kind of stormwater drainage plans, but uh, there's a notion that we don't have any stormwater from this new um, development that goes down onto the street or that goes onto the neighbor's property. Do you see that as a... Uh, Not at this time. I don't see that this causes any of that it does go right down the driveway slope the grade goes down to the street yeah what uh this won't change what's already there so it's not going to change any of that storm water because where we're putting that is already a flat area we're just basically dropping it on a flat area we're not changing the grade there changing the slope or anything like that so that existing slope of that driveway that you saw is going to stay the same Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to make a comment? Any other questions from the board? All right, seems like the abutter and the builder and the property owner have worked out some issues and they'll talk as construction's going on to make sure that. All right, well then, uh, let's have a motion to close the public hearing. I move to close the public hearing. Second. <laughs> Great. The motion has been made by Mr. Taylor and seconded by Mr. B Mr. Blue, Mr. Tate. Um,
Any discussion on a motion? All right, hearing none, I think we could just go to a voice vote, right? A uh, regular vote. Uh, is that uh, how we do it? How do we do it? We raise yeah, our yeah, hand? Should, should we add a condition about the parking as, yeah. as they discussed? Oh, sorry. Well, just that the resolution thing. It, it sounded like they had a resolution. Um, so they could do it one of two ways. Well, in the, oh, in the they, conversation you, I was involved with, it sounded like we could have the okay, all the parking kind of going the same way it does now, instead of having the little yep. okay. offshoot. Okay. So then we'll make that a condition that the parking will not, the park cars will not face the abutter's house to the the, the, the park, the, the yeah, the, the 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 structure will not. I mean, we can't. So like, if they someone drives on the right. lawn and does it, I mean, that's, we don't want to put that into it. Right. required parking space, but it's yeah. the structure yeah. will be situated to be nose in sort of towards the rear. The rear of the property. What she said. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 so that was discussion on closing the public hearing. We don't have to ask them. Were there any other considerations, Carolyn, that we don't need to have a waiver around a traffic. We all agree that there won't be enough uh, traffic impact to uh, officially waive. Um, um, you should officially waive the traffic mitigation requirement if you feel that's appropriate, um, because um, because otherwise it is in site plan. So that's an evaluation you need to make. It's a very small. Um, you know, fall into that accessory dwelling unit that. Previously was by right um, with the two family site plan was triggered. So, yes, that would, should be part of your decision if you so choose. Okay. So, it's not a condition and it's not a separate vote. It's just uh, part of the approval would okay. you could say it includes a waiver. For okay. All right. So, uh, we're still at a place. Does everybody, uh, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? All right, any opposed? Nope, we're all in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Any other questions, conditions? We have that one condition and we're all in agreement about waiving the, uh, the uh, traffic study because of the lack of impact from this small dwelling. Um, Go for it. Sounds good. All right, I'd, I'd like to move that we approve the site plan for the second detached unit at Four Pine Valley um with the condition as described by carolyn and the waiver to the traffic mitigation great i second thank you any discussion all right um all those in favor of the motion good all right unanimous easy peasy thank you thank you and thank you for coming tonight thank you You're welcome to stay around for the next hearing, but you're also welcome to leave. <laughs>
let me know if you can't hear me through the mask. Okay, it's okay. Okay. Um, so I have limited mobility, um, and our house uh, has a garage that's down on the basement level. Um, oh, that's turned sideways. Sorry. <laughs> um, turn your head sideways to see it. Um, so we knew that we needed to figure out another way for me to get in and out of the house easily. Um, the land is uh, has quite a slope to it. Um, and the, the circles on my, my little homemade map um, are old, large trees. Um, obviously, we all know they sequester a lot of carbon and provide shade. So it wasn't an option to take those down. Um, so in looking at the slope of the land and the trees, um, you know, with the garage in the basement, um, it became clear that what made the most sense was to have a parking spot um, adjacent to the walkway. Um, so I'm requesting a parking spot uh, that would be 11 feet wide, 20 feet deep, made of crushed trap rock. Um, so it would require an 11 foot curb cut. Uh, right now there's high top asphalt berm that would be replaced with the Cape Cod concrete berm. Um, so the parking spot would allow me obviously to have an accessible parking spot to get, get in and out of our house with ease. Um, but it, it would also allow me to park off of the road keeping the road clear. Um, it is low traffic area. It's a small neighborhood, but there are trucks that come through um, with some regularity. So my car would not be in the way of the trucks. Um, and also in the winter time, my car would be out of the way of the snowplow. Um, I did look up the code that uh, stipulates a second curb cut would be approved if it promoted an improved safe and efficient traffic circulation. So I, you know, I don't have your minds, uh, you know, but to me that makes sense that having the accessible parking spot off the road would improve that traffic circulation. Um, so we do live in a small neighborhood. We've got amazing neighbors. Um, there are seven houses. So you approach our house uh, as it is situated now on Country Way, and you take a right onto Russellwood Ridge, and there are only seven houses up on Russellwood Ridge. Um, and then two, sometimes three folks on Morningside Drive, which is a loop, um, pass by our home and route to, to their homes. Um, so it's, you know, it's a small handful of people that come by in front of our house. Um, I did reach out to several neighbors. I didn't include the whole neighborhood because most people don't even come as far as, as our house. Um, but I did provide a list um, to Director Mish of eight of the neighbors who are very supportive of uh, the parking spot. And two of them wrote letters in support. Um, so I think that's it. Thanks for your consideration. All right. Thank you. Um, questions from board members? So this was the same situation we dealt with that. Sorry. So that was this, this was mirrors that as mirrors that situation we had on Ryan Road. Um, so that we'd put something if we were to okay it, we could put so they would if they could add to the deed the same requirement that it that it be removed right if you i mean the zoning is pretty is very specific about the approval for a second curb cut um in that situation on ryan road the planning board did approve the second curb cut um uh, again it was for um accessibility needs of the particular um owner on the property and the board did approve a um approve the permit with a condition that the curb cut be restored and the drive and the parking pad be removed and restored loamed and seated 
upon the transfer of the property. Um, DPW also submitted comments for this application, indicating that um, they would strongly recommend if the board were to approve it, that the um, second opening be restored once the owner changes hand. So they're also, they also have a concern about um, these two openings for the same property in this location. Could I ask what other options did you look at um, in, rather than just this pad here? Mm -hmm. um, we looked at putting a new walkway in next to, can I point using this thing? Ooh, right. You know, so to have this kind of veer off, those lines are steps. Yep. Um, so to have something put in right there. Uh, so we looked at that with the contractor. The trick is that the slope is great enough there that it it would have been much pricier and bringing in a lot of fill to uh, because of the pitch, you know, to make it a level walkway. Um, and then the parking, our our boundary, um, our property boundary is right, you know, right right against there. Mm -hmm. Um, so the parking and there, oh, I didn't draw it in. There's a big tree, right, you know, like right there. <laughs> and the, um, leach field is right there. Um, so I, you know, there is, you can squeeze a car in kind of right in there, but then to get from the car up the slope of the driveway in this wheelchair that doesn't work in our current driveway, you know, so we could pave the driveway and then, you know, I'd go up around and, you know, it just, um, I'm new to using a wheelchair and um, I'm finding that anything that makes it a little bit easier is, has a huge impact. So those, you know, are they possible? Sure. Um, and it would be a lot harder physically to get. Uh, yeah. And this, I mean, the wheelchair doesn't work going uphill in the driveway. So that, you know. And the new concrete sidewalk is flat. Is that, that's what you're telling? It. From the, from the new parking spot to the house, that four foot walk is relatively flat. It's, there is a little slope, but. Like I came out the house in the wheelchair tonight uh -huh. and, uh, you know, I can push myself up. So it's not so steep that, that I, you know, can't make it up. Um, and it now uh, does ramp to the front door, which is, has changed my world. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. Parking is, um, street, street parking is allowed on Morningside. Yep. Theoretically, you could park your car in the street. Yes, and that's what I've been and doing that, the last you have been doing. few days. Yep, and finding that there's uh, there's a slope. So from the oops, uh, so I've been parking kind of right where the eleven foot is marked, um, and it's a downward slope. So I'm facing to the left, the way the paper is, and so I get out of my car. I use my forearm crutches to get up the the slope of the hill to the back of the car, right? And then I can get the wheelchair out. And so it's, again, is it doable? Mm -hmm. Is, <laughs> is it easy? Right. It is not easy. In snow, in rain, yep. you know, you just, if there is a truck coming by, you know, you just, yep. So that's... That's the situation. I'm yeah, in. certainly. If there's traffic coming by, it, it creates a whole another situation. So it, I would just comment. I think we also, a Amy, we talked about this um, uh, to the right of the driveway at yeah. the top here, pulling over and creating sort of a pad there, and then. But you have these three trees. Is that the? Yeah, the yeah. front, the very front one is very close to the curb, like. I'm so bad, like five to six feet. I mean, it's it's 
pretty close. And it's a ginormous uh, white pine mm. that um, is 116 feet tall. That is, you know, 120 years old was the, the person I spoke with their best estimate. So um, yeah, because I think I'd reached out to you about, well, could I squeeze by? And I talked to a tree person who said that would likely damage the, the tree and it might not be this year, but it, you know, in 15 year, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so we looked at several other options. Yep. Um, let's pause just for a moment to see if there's anyone in the audience, because it is a public hearing, who'd like to make a comment about the application. Please come on up. Just give us your name. I have three dimensions. I haven't <laughs> seen that. Um, I'm Rachel Moore, Ward 7, uh, City Councilor. The, the Morningside Drive is in my ward and the Sukiharas are my constituents. I've talked at length with them about this project. Uh, and I'm here to encourage you to approve the site plan. Uh, I think it's an issue really of reasonable accommodation um, and necessary accommodation. Um, and, you know, the safety, I think this will actually enhance safety in a practical way. Uh, the neighbors, you know, are supportive. Uh, and, you know, it made me really think when I looked at this, like moving forward, uh, I think we really need to add specific languaging to make a, kind of these kinds of accommodation for people with disabilities, part of you know the criteria for our consideration for our zoning codes. I think it kind of validates their experience and also um, you know it's it, it's a it it should be a I think it should be a little bit more of an automatic and, and give you all the tools to kind of automatically in, in, encompass um, the, those needs and to balance make a you know a good balance for the neighborhood. Um, you know, folks with disabilities have to deal with burdens and barriers daily, and I just don't want the city to be one of them. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, your your name, I'm Amy. Um, so when we when we when we we did okay, I'm sure, as Carolyn told you, uh, a similar situation in this in the similar neighborhood. Uh, we we okayed it because you know the the fact is is that you know we we very much appreciate your situation right now, but obviously the house will be lived in by someone after you, um, and so something to think about because if we okay it, I'm assuming, or I will speak for myself. Uh, we would i i would vote for 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 this accommodation with the notion that in the in the deed it would be added that you would have to get rid of it when the property is sold um and so given the fact that that's a its own cost associated with with that happening um you might want to think about what adding the loan adding the dirt in that one spot and grading it would be so that it would be a permanent i mean because one is increasing the value of your property and one is an accommodation for you so that's my two cents thanks sam other questions uh having just been at the pioneer valley planning commission meeting tonight one of the presentations was about um efforts in the region to make uh, communities in the Pioneer Valley aging and uh, dementia friendly. And um, one of the presenters uh, showed some statistics from, I think from Amherst about the number of people who were hoping to stay in the area and also stay in their homes. And I think 83% of respondents said that they really wanted to be able to age in place. And so I just want to sort of echo Councilor Maori's comments about creating a pathway to make this kind of thing possible for more residents, not just people who are trying to age in place, but other people who need access and want to do that in their current homes and don't have to move just to be able to park in a more convenient place. Great, thank you. I also agree that we should, or whoever, city council should think about a pathway for this sort of thing. Um, given that we don't have that pathway currently, 
but we do have precedent for a similar situation. Um, you know, I'm certainly in favor of of kind of following that precedent with the deed restriction. I mean, from my from my point of view, what's proposed isn't even a curb cut. Honestly, it's it's still Cape Cod berm, so it's still a curb, and it's a uh, you know it's it's a landscaping treatment. It's a it's not asphalt. It's not an asphalt parking space. So, you know, I could. <laughs> I could be convinced that it isn't even a curb cut, but I, I know that's not what's before us tonight. So just for this rookie, explain to me what a Cape Cod berm is. So I think the full berm is about a six inch asphalt berm. And then Cape Cod berm is a four inch asphalt berm that's more sloped. So you see, it's like the more sloped one that you can drive over. I don't know why it's Cape Cod, but that's still for another day. I, I don't know why it's called Cape Cod Berm, but thank you for asking that question. <laughs> I think they they use it a lot. <laughs> that's so sad. Yeah. Um, I would just to clarify, I mean, we have one term to um associate with any kind of access from a the public way for parking purposes. So even though it's not a standard driveway opening. You know, people um, argue that they, if they don't have curbs, they don't need a curb cut permit <laughs> to create a driveway. But actually, it's really a permission to access your property from the city right of way. And it's all falls under that language of curb cut. That makes sense. Thank you. So it seems like we're pretty much in agreement that we could approve this application with the condition that um, a deed restriction be applied um, re related to at the sale of the property that this prior to the sale of the property that this extra little parking space would be um, loamed and sheeted returned to its natural state with a full curb. Right. All right. Um, and and move to close public comment. I second. All right. Discussion. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, unanimous. Public public comment part of the hearing is closed. Um, any other discussion? It's just that one condition. Um, um, how do we? How I, mean, I do think it makes so much sense for the to talk about a mechanism for this type of thing, and I. You know, I think you guys should think about it, but at the same time, also have oh, uh, okay, but at the same time, also have uh, you know, very serious uh, health requirements for, for it. You know, um, I think there's, there's varying levels of distress, and not all of them. Like you must have a handicap placard oh, or no, no, I, I just think Sam, is your mic on? Oh, oh sorry. Um uh you know, like I, I think that you, that there's there's varying degrees of disability and varying degrees of disability, you know, I'll speak from you know, as someone, you know, with, with MS, I mean at some point I might be in a similar situation, but I'm not in that situation now. And so I shouldn't be able to put a driveway, uh, an extra parking place as of right now. Um, and so I think that whatever the requirements we work on need to have very, you know, and we need to, you know, probably bring in the, some sort of health, like the, whatever the city, the city disability, Com disability commission to, to talk about what, what are real requirements that need to be met. What kind of doctor note you need? <laughs> so, what is the process for changing the zoning? Or the well, technically, so um, zoning amendments can be submitted by city councilors, by departments, um, by the planning board. We obviously, with our um, support with the planning office, uh, the mayor's office, et cetera. So there, there are any number of ways that an amendment can be submitted. I would say that um, instead of looking, potentially instead of looking at sort of what someone's um, 
um, mobility issues might be, really you want to potentially consider um, ensuring that all alternatives have been, um, you know, eliminated, that there isn't some other way. And so that maybe it is just a, it is site plan review so that you don't necessarily identify if, you know, if you give your doctor's note, then you can, <laughs> you get a pass because even if someone has a serious mobility issue there, that may, there may still be other ways to skin the cat on the, yeah. on the property, you know? So there are a lot of ways to um, address access. And sometimes people, um, you know, we, we all sort of get set in what we think works. And then all of a sudden someone presents another idea and it's like, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. So I think it's more as opposed to sort of understanding what the health issues are, maybe just ensuring that all the aspects of the property have been evaluated and that there is no other mechanism to address the um, concerns and the need, but that it's still, I mean, I think it's probably most appropriate to still be a planning board review so that there are, so there are more than, you know, there's more than one set of eyes looking at the um, potential options on the property. Is that something we can codify though, like deed restrictions? If it was to be a an, an amendment or we would yeah i mean to... so right now the zoning doesn't give you a path at all so i think it makes sense to at least identify okay there may be a path either you have to show that this improves safety in the network or if there is a defined if a, if a person has an accessibility need and shows that um there are no other ways to accomplish um access to um a building on the property and they agree to put a deed restriction on or something. You can identify those things in the zoning, but it still needs planning board review just to sort of say, um, ensure that all those things have been evaluated. Then um, the language could be written that way. And we could certainly um, move that forward from our office. And I mean, I could bring you text and you all could debate it and figure out what makes sense. And then it could be introduced to city council. That sounds like a way to go, and, you know, and I appreciate what Dana brought to us on the PVPC that it's recognized as a regional, probably nationwide kind of situation, right, with our aging population right. for sure. And the plant and the and the city did just adopt through a um, process um, working with PVPC our own sort of individual plan for um, um being a community with a goal of being a community that is um, age accessible and sort of universally accessible. So it certainly meets those um, um, goals too that are identified in the plan. Um, so just in a practical sense, in this case, before they do any construction on that pad or eliminating the full curb, they need to come to the planning office and show this deed restriction has been filed? Um. So the process would be if you um, incorporate that as a condition in the permit, um, you could um, require as the permit condition that before they seek um, permission from DPW, because DPW in this case is the one that issues permits for access from the street, that they need to show um, the deep restriction. So you could put it that way because that, uh, DPW, they, that's sort of one of their checks. They check the width allowed and then um, whether it's the primary or whether it's the only, or if it's a secondary curb cut and make sure that all the permitting allowing that has, is in place before they grant the actual construction of the space. And they're well aware of this, you know, because um, the applicant approached DPW to begin with um, in the first place. Good. Anything else? <clears throat> All right. Is there a motion? Have we closed the public hearing up yet? I Have think we did. I think we did. We okay. voted through that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I... Uh, I move that we approve uh, the second curb cut on 1110 Morningside Drive, map ID 1112 WSP, uh, with the condition that 
uh, the um, uh, curb cut will be returned to uh, its present condition uh, and that before construction, uh, proof of the deed change has been made. Second. Great, motion's been made and seconded. Carolyn will tidy up all that language for us. Thank you. Um, any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Well, good luck. Thank you for coming down in person. Um, that's right, we couldn't have done this by Zoom. No, no, the applicant can't either. But good luck with your project. Thanks for coming, Counselor, on this rainy night. And you, math students, did you get a few nuggets there? <laughs> cool. I'm, I move that we close the meeting. No. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Wishful thinking, Sam. Thanks, nice Chad. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm so close. Sam is an animal. Okay. And Carolyn, your mic's off. Stupid ass. We have some ARs in case you didn't hear. <laughs> um, I thought our public might really want to know. Approval not required, which means you have to endorse that there's no approval required for a subdivision. The um, It's a good thing because it's raining that I didn't bring the paper copies down. So I'm going to show you on the screen, even though we're in person. Um, the first one is, uh, let's see, so Brian. Okay. Just grab this one here. Is actually for this area out here. Joe, <laughs> um, let's pull that up. Um, You're welcome to stay. We're going through some other kind of bureaucratic permitting mm -hmm. called A, A and R's. You can but the well, absent, right? <laughs> there are only three of us for the A and R. Is that true? Um, just making rules off now. Yeah. You didn't sell it well enough, George. No, I didn't. Uh, we have enough to write. The, 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 most important part. the most confusing part. Everyone stays for the hearing. But yeah. The civics, yeah. like, what about? Well, that's I don't think I've ever met Councillor Maori in person. So, but you've seen her on the screen a yeah. hundred times. Yeah, I saw when I saw you outside City Hall. I also saw Councillor Jarrett and maybe Councillor Foster out there too. And I was like, wait, who are all? I know these people? It like took they, me a minute to. They, they have legs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're not wearing sweatpants. <laughs> well, they might have been that. Thing. Okay, so see this thing where this says remaining land two. This is where we are sitting right now in council chambers over here. Actually, we're over here. So um, this parcel B or parcel A and parcel B will become lot one. And this is going to be carved off for um, the new affordable housing building that the city then will give for a dollar to a winning bidder for the but, RFP. But this end is over here. Yes. Yeah. The building department is down in the basement in this corner. No, no, we're not quite over here. The building department, see my cursor? Yeah. That's the building department in this lower lot. And across this, across. The parking lot for the building inspectors is right yeah, here. Okay. Where's City Hall? Is it off to the bottom left? No, top. No, top. Oh. Up here, see okay. my okay, okay, yeah, and we're sitting over here. I'm gonna miss that staircase. I like going up and down that thing. On your skateboard, oh my skateboard. Yeah. So that staircase, if if you've gone up it many times, you can see that maybe it's not um, in the best condition. No, I I just like its function. <laughs> and 
um, actually, um, you can probably tell that there's a lot of sort of subsidence behind there and a lot of um, unknown activity <laughs> underneath the stairs. So oh. the city actually has had a plan recently to um, tear take all of that out because of the problems. And so um, this saves us money. Yeah. <laughs> Just giving the problem to someone else. No. But this is so sort of back to the the idea is that the building would be sort of placed right there. And through that, all that excavation and new retaining wall that'll create um, a more, you know, it'll armor that hill essentially with the building. But we'll lose access down to the bus station through there. You'll have people will have to now walk down Crash Avenue, right? Correct. Right. So we'll have that shortcut through or Pulaski Park. The, the City Hall and Right. This is the project that there's a CPC application for, right? Correct. Yeah. How many places? How many homes? Twenty to twenty-four units. Yeah. Good location. So, what are we concerned with again? Parcel A and Parcel B. Um. Actually, so all of this land is owned by the city currently. So it's really just creating a new lot. Um, that's a combination of two parcels. So the city owned parcel, th there's a property line sort of that splits city hall from the municipal building, even though it's still owned by the city. So by deed that they're still showing two parcels and this would sort of take a piece of each of those and merge them together into one lot that will be um, extracted out of the city hall holdings once the disposition happens um, and is there any it's just like the green space of this place Pulaski Park is that yeah sort of the idea um, just, or the bike path um you know this green this greenway here. Thing where like kids would hang out would yeah. be like just Pulaski Park yeah that's pretty good park yeah, no, that's great I'm just <laughs> wondering what well, there. I I know this isn't, and they can go across the street for coffee before they. <laughs> I know this isn't. This has nothing to do with the ANR, but will there be access on the higher level, on we city think hall? Design process now, yeah. but I um um yes, I think that's the um that there will be some egress from the parking lot. Yeah. So city property, though, it's going to be carved off, and city property is going to be sold to another entity. Uh huh. I move to endorse the NR before us. I second. Okay. Motion's been made, seconded. George looks concerned. Is there any discussion? Well, well, I mean, I'm not sure what kind of discussion. I mean, I, I'm honestly a little concerned. First of all, giving up city land for a dollar or notion of of just some housing. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with the ANR. Like one hundred percent. And so that's what I'm right. But one allows for the other. But the ANR could also be sold to anybody, except for city council already surplused it for affordable housing. Okay, well, if city council, I mean, listen, I mean, if, if our elected representatives have, have okay it, then that's the answer. Smarter minds than us. Yes, 100%. And a 20 unit building, 20 units is not a subdivision. A subdivision is a division of land. Creation of a new. So a subdivision is, right, a subdivision is actually the creation of. <laughs> So that part is right, but more legally and technically, Jan is right. Subdivision really means the creation of a street then on which then you can create parcels that have frontage on that street. So what you're voting on in all of these is that there's no new street being proposed from which new lots can be created. Um, and so you're voting to endorse carving out a piece of property um, that does not trigger the need for a subdivision application. 
in order and has frontage. Yeah, it has frontage on craft staff. Right. All righty. So motion's been made and seconded. We had some discussion. Um, all those in favor of the motion to approve the A&R? Unanimous. Uh, let's see, we have another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did Wayne retire so he didn't have to actually deal with the aesthetic arguments that are going to happen with this one unit structure right here? But that's going to be so much fun. You can come to the CPC if you want to participate in some of the fun. Okay. All right. So this next one is a transfer of land um, to address an encroachment. And so there are no new parcels being created. This is on Platinum Circle. Um, so you can see, even though they're different shaped, do you guys remember this from math class? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, there are two distinctly differently shaped triangles. <laughs> that have the same area that are being swapped um, to accommodate this in-ground pool encroachment. So that's all this is. So it allows them uh, a legal setback yeah. from their property line. Mm -hmm. If we okay with this, do we have access to the pool? <laughs> 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 um so again this is your um voting to endorse a plan that shows a transfer of property but that does not trigger a subdivision application i move to endorse the anr of the property form where's i second it's off of Route 66. Route 66 says Florence Road. Okay. Down Route 66 a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's the high end. Okay. Motion's been, oh. motion's been made and seconded to accept the A&R at Platinum Circle. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. I think I have one more, but I can't find it. Um, I don't remember all the day and all I expected. My first round here really become. Uh, well, that and site plans for detached units is like the new ANR. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a filing fee the city gets for every ANR? Yeah. That's right. Um, okay, interesting. Um, I've never seen it before, but it's a whole. Hmm. This, this one, though? No, not this. This is the exact opposite.
Those. So um, this is the last one. And this is on Riverside Drive. And it's the American Legion. They're carving, uh, I'm gonna zoom in. So th they are carving off uh, uh, existing uh, build, uh, building lot, 60 feet, total of 13,000 square feet, uh, 13,815 to be exact. Um, what are these kind of parcels underneath? Those are all, so, um, there is a paper street on Zero Avenue. Is a paper street, um, which means it was never built. Um, it was never constructed. It was laid out, but then, um, uh, then there, and so those uh, light lines underneath were originally intended parcels to front on Lonsdale, mm -hmm. and it was never built. So then uh, it reverts back essentially to the. Abutters on either side, the American Legion owns this whole big parcel that contains portions of those um, parcels. Hmm. So um, this is um, this you may see you can see underneath it also says parking area. So there's a big parking lot next to the American Legion. So this lot would um, covers a, a portion of that. Yep. I moved and approved the um, I move to approve the uh, subdivision or the the dividing of the American Legion. Uh, you move to approve the A and R on uh, Riverside Drive. Yeah, that's one. Thank, uh, thank you. I second. second. All right. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All right, all those in favor. Aye. Okay, we did it. Great. No I minutes. I don't have minutes. Sorry. I move to close the meeting. We've had a late entry to the audience. Sir, sure, you here for some business? Well, I was, but um, we it's just closed. Yeah, we, we can, but <laughs> we had two items on the agenda. The first one was the uh, Main Street Leeds one? No, no, there's nothing about Leeds here on the agenda. The planning board? Are you looking for, yeah, this is, are you looking for Conservation Commission? They're only on Zoom and it started at 5.30. Yeah, so we had a couple of very small hearings uh, about extra. That was interesting. Yeah, no. <laughs> Paper streets. Paper streets. Hound us forever. <laughs> good to see you. You too, George. your work up on the trail. Okay. It was a good summer up there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I moved to close the meeting. There's a motion made to close. Um, there's a motion made to close the uh, meeting of October 13th at. Yeah, you order, yeah. 807. At 807. Is there a second? I second. That was a second. <laughs> All right, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Well done, team.